The way I've structured these videos means that Nala gets a full review all to herself, even though she's not an official Disney princess. I just thought I should explain why this one has a relatively short running time. Anyway, we've had a plethora of princesses, each one dramatically improving on the last. The non-princesses must be getting some benefit from that, right? Right? I did say in the last video that Nala was my favourite Disney character when I was young. Now I'm older, I have no idea why. She's such a non-presence in this movie, she's more of a plot device than a personality. Not that she's irredeemable, she's free-spirited and playful and genuinely brave, which makes her a good foil for Simba who definitely puts on an act more than he actually is brave. And her calling him out on his flaws and proving him wrong, without being a complete bitch, is pretty fun to watch. When they're children. But then they grew up, and the writers started shipping them. I suppose from the moment you find out that their parents have decided they'll do the line equivalent of getting married, it's kind of obvious and inevitable that they were going to end up together, even though they're both dead against it from the start. And... I don't see it. This is what I mean by her being a plot device. She's just the excuse for Simba to go back to Pride Rock. Except she's not even any bloody good at being a plot device, because it's Rafiki who convinces him to go back. So, what's the point in Nala being there? I don't know. And the more I think about it, the less sense it makes. If you have any ideas, please let me know. One more thing. Can you feel the love tonight? Really fucking sucks, okay? I hate it. Next up is... Oh god, no. You can expect a lot more vitriol from me over the next few weeks because... Well, I'll explain next time when I review Pocahontas.